the UK has a has an interesting history when it comes to, to slavery. Because were there actually slaves in the UK? Sort of. Or was it more of a transatlantic yeah, yeah. slave so trade thing? The overwhelming majority of Britain's enslavement occurred in the Caribbean and obviously in America before the American Revolution. Um, so sometimes so-called planters, human traffickers, would bring their enslaved people of African heritage back to the UK. And this caused a lot of controversy because one of the conceits Britain had was, uh, to quote, Britain is too pure air for a slave to breathe. So this idea that slavery shouldn't happen in the UK, we should only do it abroad. But fascinately, they weren't treating their own poor people particularly well during that period. So during the same period that slavery was going on in the Caribbean, uh, poor people in the UK were being hung for stealing bread and milk or rich people's hats. I mean, literally, um, those kind of crimes. Very, very brutal uh, situation during the Industrial Revolution. So then you had a situation where enslaved or formerly enslaved black people were coming back to the UK, sometimes even getting their freedom, but then slave catchers would kidnap them and put them back on a boat back to the Caribbean. And so there were a lot of famous cases around this um, that kind of helped the cause of abolition and things of that nature. But one of the things that Britain, that has made race a more difficult subject to tackle head on in the UK is because the slavery happened over there, because the empire happened over there, we can pretend none of it happened here and that somehow all these buildings in Liverpool and Bristol and London have nothing to do with kind of Britain's history and participation in kind of race-based genocide or slavery. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's very interesting because it's almost, you know, because the US has an actual history of slavery. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, black people in this country have relatives. Yeah, you know, exactly. the, the, I mean, they aren't alive anymore, obviously, but, you know, have great, great grandparents and so forth that were actually slaves, they were actually whipped, they were actually tortured, they were, they were bred like animals yeah, and so absolutely. forth. Absolutely. But, but the UK was technically responsible for all this initially because, yeah. you know, before yeah. the US was, uh, was independent, the UK was sending slaves yeah, course, into, yeah. into the US, into, into Jamaica, into Haiti, into, into well, not Haiti. No, no, Britain did. So, so what Britain okay. had was in the 18th century, Britain um, got the contract for what's called the Asiento. So this was the right to supply enslaved people to all of the Spanish colonies and then eventually the French. So Britain became the premier sort of slave trader. So even a lot of the enslaved people who were going to the French colonies or the Spanish colonies, it was British shipping that was carrying them and, and selling them. So you are actually correct in that sense. So, I mean, but when you look at, you know, black-white relations in, in the UK compared to the US, are they similar or are they a little bit different? I, I would say there, they, there's some similarities and then there's some huge differences. So, for example, there is nowhere in the UK you can go where there's only black folk. You know, like if you go to the south side of Chicago or you go to certain parts of the Bronx, I've visited family up there, and literally the, everyone that you won't see like, in fact, my, my business partner grew up in Brooklyn uh, when she, before age 10, you know, I don't think she'd even seen any white people. Do you know what I mean? So there was Brooklyn back then, you know, a whole school, there wasn't a single non-black person in the school. You have places in the UK that are close to that, certainly with the schooling, but even then you're probably talking like 70, 30 if you went somewhere like Peckham or Moss Side in Manchester back in the day. Actually, it's much more uh, racially integrated even than, say, France. So one of the things France did was chose to take its immigrant community, which are predominantly West and North African, and put them outside of the city in these massive projects, housing projects, um, outside of the city. In the UK, we are all inside the city, and the projects are right in the center, in and among the wealth. So you have the difficulty in the UK where because there wasn't formal Jim Crow in the same way, there was segregation being practiced, and the British government never did anything about it for a very long time, but they didn't enforce it. You had, because uh, you don't have quite the same history, it can be a lot more difficult to deal with. But also there's no doubt that the experience of black folk in America, right to this day, is, is far worse. Many of us who came from the Caribbean, so if you're from Jamaica, when slavery ended in Jamaica, there was no KKK. Only a suicidal nut job of a white man would ever start a KKK in Jamaica where they were like 1% of the population, right? So even though there was poverty in Jamaica and structural problems, when my grandparents came, they came from an environment in which the tiny white population that they had still in Jamaica was, had not continued to terrorize them in the intermediate century. Does that make sense? So they came with a certain idealism for the British Empire and a certain admiration, but they hadn't experienced a lot of what African Americans experienced in that whole intervening century. We got some of it, but there were not public lynchings in the UK in the 50s and 60s. So I don't, I don't want to play it down and say it's not a huge problem. It is, but I also want to be respectful to, I mean, the police are not pulling drive-bys on 12-year-old children in the UK. There is police brutality, people are getting killed. But I think to make a kind of apples for apples comparison with the black American situation, because we can relate to it, would be a bit disrespectful and a bit of an exaggeration. The, the, the situation here to me is much more extreme in both ways, in terms of the oppression is much worse, 
the hoods out here are much worse. In fact, America's by far the most violent of all the developed rich countries in the world. But in, in a weird way, black culture, because of that, has a lot more respect. Um, there's a lot more opportunities in some ways than there is in, in the UK. In fact, even many successful black people from the UK end up coming here. You think of someone famously like Idris Elba or Chueto Odefo or, or any of those kind of actors. Partly it's just because Hollywood's here, but partly it's because they probably wouldn't get the kind of roles that they can get here. So it's a weird contradiction to me. There's no black middle class in the UK. Whereas I've been to neighborhoods in, 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 uh, in LA or elsewhere. Oh, like, is this a middle, it, like, it's strange for us, like it's a middle class neighborhood. There's no middle class in the UK? So there is, black there is. middle class in the UK? No, there's, there's in black individuals that are middle class, but there's no black middle class neighborhoods. So if you came to the UK mm. and you said, where's the black neighborhoods? All of the neighborhoods I could point you to are are hoods, they're working class neighborhoods. So yeah, there's individual black people who are doing, I'm, I'm doing okay, I can hardly say I grew up, I'm not, I earned far more money than either of my parents did growing up, for example, so I can hardly say my children will grow up the same way I did. But there's no neighborhood to migrate to, if, if that, does that make sense? Um, there's, no, there's no Harlem for it. There's example. no, right, you know right in Harlem you had that division of the, the, the poor part, but then you had the Harlem Renaissance, you had all of, mm -hmm. there isn't that. Shout out Vlad, shout out to Kayla. Um, I mean, I just did this video because as a black man, I understand where we, where we came from and I understand that it's time to rise up. This is what I know. So, I salute to those who get platforms and really say something. I just ask when you get your opportunity, you do the best for you and yours and your people. Shalom.